Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Um, we're calling it Lightning. Are you ready for the jolt? Talking about um, some of the perks of upgrading to Lightning and um, things to consider along the way. I'm Andrea Terrell, Marketing Director at Configuro. Um, and this webinar is part of a series that we put together to help all Salesforce users, whether you have three, three users or 30,000. Um, so a couple housekeeping items before we dive into the presentation. Um, if you have questions, we will be doing Q&A at the end. So please type your questions into the chat window of GoToMeeting. Uh, we are on Twitter with our handle is at Configuro. So if you have insights to tweet from today's webinar, please use that handle um, or the hashtag GoLightning uh, for a chance to win some Configuro swag. Um, we will be posting the recording to Configuro.com. That's a question that we get pretty frequently. Um, so you will be getting an email with a link to access that recording um, after the presentation is done today. Um, if you are based in Atlanta or based in the Southeast, um, or maybe just paying us a visit later this month for Southeast Dreaming, um, I wanted to tell you all about an, a happy hour event that we're having on the last day of the conference. Um, so from 5.30 to 7 on March 31st, um, we'll be debriefing Southeast Dreaming at Whiskey Blue. Um, if you would like to pre-register, there's a link here um, with full event details and a link to information to sign up. Um, without further ado, I want to introduce to today's speaker, Jen Nelson. Um, she's one of the senior solution architects here at Configuro. Um, she's been with us for five years, one of our most seasoned employees, um, but she uh, has been working in the Salesforce ecosystem for over 12. Um, so Jen, um, I'll hand it over to you. Great, thank you. Hi everybody, this is Jen Nelson with Configuro. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Um, as Andrea said, I have been in the ecosystem for over 12 years. I started out as a Salesforce customer. Quick interesting fact, one of my employers actually implemented Salesforce for the service team two years before we implemented for sales and marketing. So we actually set up Salesforce entirely for customer service and account management. <laughs> and then uh, we brought along sales and marketing afterwards. So interesting little way to do it. It worked out really great. I got a lot of experience with Salesforce and then came into consulting. I'm also a Salesforce user group leader and a Salesforce MVP. So I'm really looking forward to sharing some lightning knowledge with you today. All right, Miss Andrea, we see Configuro by the numbers. Okay, and now we're good. All right, so I am in a dev org um, with lightning enabled. And so we wanted to talk through with you um, once you've got Lightning enabled in your org, and of course Salesforce has all kinds of really nice wizards to um, walk you through becoming light, Lightning enabled. Um, it has all kinds of step-by-step -step to go through and show you how to enable Lightning for your users, how to set up your Lightning page layout, um, how to get everything squared away. So I'm not going to replicate all of that that they have, but I want to show you more from a front end user experience, what type of things we found are really, really useful and helpful for the users in Lightning experience that may not be so obvious to, to everyone going through and using it. It may not be obvious to your users. It may not be obvious in some senses to your um, system admins as well. So uh, we can see here we've got the Lightning Experience, the um, app menu where we used to have it in Classic over here in the right where you can change up your tab has actually moved over here to the left in Lightning. I like it because it really gives you a nice clean view. It's a pop-out window. It gives you a nice clean view of every option that you have. So you can see at a glance all of the apps 
that have been exposed to your user's profile. You can also see all of the tabs that are available. And I love that they put this really cool search at the top, too. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've worked in a couple of orgs where they were unlimited edition, and they took it seriously. And there were <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of tabs. And so to try and get through and kind of guess what I'm trying to get to, um, if I want to go in and see, for example, campaigns, I can actually start typing ahead here in the search and it's going to filter down for me to show me exactly what object um, matches and then I can jump to, right to that tab if I choose. I can jump to a particular app. So it's very nice and the other thing that I love about it is that up here in the top right hand corner you actually have a link to the app exchange. So you can actually go directly to the App Exchange Marketplace, and if you have permission to download and install apps, you can do that. Even if you're a user that doesn't have um, permission to download an app, an app Exchange app, you could still go and search and maybe you want to raise it to your admin team and say, hey, by the way, I found this really great app that does scheduling or um, does something nifty with contacts and their photos or something of that nature and share it with your system and then see if it's something that might work for your organization. Okay. Um, when we initially come in to um, a particular app, I've got the home tab as the um, landing page for each app and so you can see here the home page has different components. Configuring the home page in Lightning is a little bit different experience than configuring it in um, Salesforce Classic. One of the biggest things that we hear from users is when um, a new Salesforce org is provisioned or a new org is switch to Lightning, an existing org is switch to Lightning, this news feed here takes up a pretty big chunk of the left section of the home page. And you can actually move that or if your users are not interested, you can remove it. So anywhere that you see a gear icon in Lightning, you go ahead and hit that gear. It gives you the option to go to setup, or you can go ahead and edit a particular page. Um, when we get into the objects, we can talk about editing objects. When it says edit page, you're always editing a lightning page. And, and we'll see the difference as we get further into other objects. Um, but if I click edit, it actually brings up the lightning um, uh, app builder page for the home tab component and so I actually have all this ability where I can move things around, um, sort information as I choose. You know if I had a particular organization that wasn't working on opportunities I could actually remove this component for quarterly performance. Um, I I here I've moved the news feed around. So the news feed was previously here and it was very prominent and took up a lot of the space. I just drag it over here and um, go ahead and save my changes. Another thing that's nice about this besides being able to have all of these components which are existing standard out of the box components so really cool things like um, a filter list. So I could go in and if I wanted to add on the home page, I have to actually put it into a container. But if I wanted to add on the home page a quick list view of one of my objects, I could actually add that to the home page. So you can see here the object drop down. It shows you a list of all of the objects in your um, Salesforce organization. 
So maybe on my home page, I want to go ahead and do a quick list view of all contacts with birthdays this month. Um, and when I go ahead and go to save, particularly if I'm creating it as a new um, lightning page, then I also want to go ahead and do my activation. So activation is the equivalent of um, not only making it a default, but making it a default for particular users. So we can either say this is our standard home page for everybody, or we could go in and we could set the home page to specific profiles. So if I just wanted to see this for my um, sales users, I could go in and pick just those profiles. Okay, I'm going to actually set it for everybody and go ahead and next and activate. And so now when I come back, um, occasionally, depending on how my internet is running, I do sometimes have to refresh this page. Um, looks like it came through. Perfect. So I didn't have to refresh the page at all. So now I've got this nice little combination on my home tab where I've got some uh, reports charts for my sales teams. I've got upcoming events and tasks for everybody, recent records, top deals for my sales team, an assistant which will automatically learn your behaviors so that it goes through and tells you things like, hey, by the way, you have a case that you own that hasn't been updated in five days, or you have an opportunity that has been sitting in the same stage for three months. Um, so the assistant has a lot of very nice things. And then I've got this really cool filtered list of contacts with birthdays this month showing right on my home tab. So that's pretty exciting. I like that a lot. Um, something else before we move into the individual tab. It is not necessary anymore to have upcoming events or news on the home tab in Lightning because you can actually have out of the box standard Salesforce tab, a standard tab for calendar, which is really nice. So this is showing me um, my Salesforce events as well as it's showing me a couple of additional um, list views that I've created for calendars. Um, and I can even change up the colors for them so that I can see um, visually different, um, uh, different events. Let me see if I see anything back here in January. My data is a little bit old here. So, um, but you would be able to see uh, records that have upcoming dates whether it's an opportunity close date, an actual event in Salesforce, um, a, maybe you, you have a special custom date field on your cases. So this is, this is a pretty slick um, new feature. The other thing is you can compile all of the news over into one tab. So this just kind of runs. The news engines are looking for things like um, different account names across all the the news searches, except for Yahoo News, I believe, is no longer included. But um, Google News and, and other news feeds. Um, and, and it will also look for information about particular contacts. So as long as your folks know it's all here, it's not necessary really to have it on the home tab. It's all about level of comfort and what everybody wants to see. Okay. Um, something else that I really, really love about um, the new look and feel in Lightning is, as an example, I can come over here to leads on any of my, I know, thank you, on any of my list views with the exception of recently viewed. I'm going to go, for example, to Open Leads. I have these really cool toggle options over here. 
um, things that I can turn on and off on the list view on a case-by-case -case basis. So, for example, if I want to just look at all of my leads here, that's fine. I have my um, gear shift where I can go in and create a new list view. I can rename the existing list view. I can edit the filters for the list view. So this is just a pop-out that comes out and I can go in and set any of my filters that I choose on the leads. Um, I can also pick and choose which fields display. So it's just taking all of the components we're very familiar with on an existing list view in Classic and bringing them out into Lightning components, making them very nice and easy and clean to include. If I wanted to include, for example, industry, I just start typing IND right on the um, column of available fields. So I'm up here, I do IND, it comes down, I bring it over, put it wherever I want to. This is a little trick that I always love doing is you can control shift to select multiple fields and move them all down at one time. And then when I save, I've got my list view updated and it's got the new um, field included in it. Okay. The other thing that I think is so incredibly cool on these list views is you can now switch your list views to Kanban views. So if I go ahead and say, for example, on my leads, I want to see a Kanban of leads. Right now I've got the leads um, set in the Kanban based on lead status. So I've got two leads that are open, not contacted. I've got 12 leads that are working. I've got zero leads that are closed without being converted. I can go to a particular lead and if I need to, I can actually click on that lead record and go into the individual lead. I can see their information. I've got this awesome path going right across the top where I can easily move the lead to a new status. So all I have to do is click the path and just do mark status as complete. And now I've moved that to a closed, not converted lead. So basically others would call it an unqualified lead, right? But I can do the same thing in my Kanban. So if I come back and I go to all open leads, and I say I want to see it in the Kanban view and I want to take Brenda McClure and I want to move her over here to close not converted. Done. That's it. That's all I have to do with Brenda. Okay. So very exciting. Um, we also have this cool thing now that we can do Kanban settings. So right now, out of the box, the Kanban is grouped by lead status. Maybe I want to change it around and do it by product interest instead. And so I want to see my leads sorted by what their products of interest are. Okay. Um, I could go back in. It, basically, any field that you have um, uh, on your leads you can do as a group by and so that's going to define your path across the top in the Kanban here. Okay. Um, you also have the ability in the Kanban setting to show summarize by if there is a, um, a, a, a field that could be a summary field. So when we get to the accounts, I actually have a summary field on the accounts and I'll show you how that works. But I just think this is just super powerful, gives people a lot of flexibility in how they're viewing um, their data rather than just the standard old list view. Something else that's really cool is that you can toggle charts on and off 
right on the list view. So I can be on the Kanban or I can be on the list, on the grid. Doesn't matter which way I am. Um, either way, I go in and I've got charts. And so these charts are actually representative of the data that is in the list view. So whatever data is in this list view, I'm seeing right now a chart of leads by status. So I can see my working contacted, open not contacted leads, right? And we see right in here, that's exactly what we have. There are 12 total. Two are open not contacted and 10 are working not contacted. But I've got a small list of open leads here. Um, for those of you, especially using marketing automation tools, you've got lots and lots and lots of leads. So you've got that. You've got um, uh, leads by source. These are out of the box. And you'll notice that like leads by source is a donut. And so as you hover over each of the donuts, it shows you not only um, what the lead source is, what the count is, and what percentage that count represents of your total. <coughs> so right now, I've got partner referral lead source. I have three of those records, and three is 25% of my 12 total open leads. Um, I can see my summary down here at the bottom. If I choose to change the chart type, I can change the chart type to a vertical bar or a horizontal. Um, but I can also create my own new charts. So here, I created this chart myself called Leads by State. And so I actually just went into the grid or the gear shift, clicked New Chart. I give it a name. I give it a type. Um, I tell it what I want the type to be. Do I want it to be aggregate, account, uh, an aggregate, a sum, or a count? What field do I want to aggregate on? Um, and then what my uh, grouping is by. Okay. And so in this particular chart, if we edit this chart, I've actually got it set as a vertical bar chart to count the lead IDs, so count my records, and group it by state or province. So pretty darn slick, pretty exciting stuff. And of course, for those of you that have done any of the demos or, or trailheads on WAVE, you can see that these are leveraging the the same technology. It is not that WAVE is installed automatically for everybody by any means, but it is using that similar technology to give us these charts, which is really nice. Um, of course, we can still do edit and list if we need to for any fields that are um, naturally editable to the user. Um, so I think this is all some some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool stuff that we can do here. Okay, um, I can also. Oh yeah, I said I can filter my list on the fly. So if I wanted to go in and say, okay, also filter for all where. Um, let's see, state, province is not equal to blank, right? So now I want to see any of my filters that or any of my leads that have a state. If they don't have a state, I don't want to see it in this list, right? But then I can go back in and I can actually review my um, filters and remove any that I don't want to include. And then I go right back to my full list, okay? Um, let's go ahead and take a look at accounts. So on the accounts, I'm going to go to my account list view. And I've got all of my accounts. When I go into, um, I'm going to switch to my Kanban view here.
Oof. All right. And then I've got my Kanban settings. So what I love about this is, you know, I've got a summarizable field um, on the account for annual revenue. So I said, go ahead and group my Kanban by industry. Maybe you want to group it by um, account type or um, some other, something you don't want your Kanban, you know, 43 columns wide, but something that would be easy. Um, and so you can see here, not only my accounts laid out by industry, but you can see what the annual revenue is rep represented by the, those um, uh, records that are in that industry. So kind of cool to be able to see that from the list view without having to go and create a report. Okay. Um, opportunities behaves very similarly to our leads. So same, same type of uh, concept where when you go into the opportunities, you can have your Kanban view. Um, these Kanban settings are pretty new, and the reason that I'm so excited by them is that, you know, not everybody tracks them out. Some people who are working on opportunities, I've actually seen where they have hundreds of thousands of opportunities but the opportunities don't have an amount value to them. They have something like a services provided hours um, value associated with them. So they have a non-currency value to their um, opportunities that they're tracking. So they can actually go in and they can pick a summarizable field that's a numeric, for example, instead of an amount. So pretty, pretty cool, pretty slick. Same type of idea with your opportunities. You can drag them along the, um, along the path. You can also go into an individual opportunity. And when you look at the opportunity, you can do your, um, uh, do your stages to move um, the opportunity along the stage. Something else that's incredibly cool with opportunities and leads is the sales, sales path functionality um, in the Lightning experience. It's really incredible. So if I go into uh, Lightning experience here and I'm going to search for sales path, let's see, where is my settings. There we go. Sometimes you got to know what the magic word is. Um, so I'm going to go into my path settings here. And I do have paths enabled. This is something that um, you may have to enable in your org. But once you um, enable it, you can actually set up paths for um, both leads and the opportunities. So if I go in and say example one, I don't know what I'm going to call it. And so I'm going to go in, set this against opportunity. I don't have any record types on the um, opportunity objects, so I don't need to pick record types. And then and what tick list is my path defined by? Right, So I'm going to go ahead and choose next. It shows you, okay, here's what your path looks like. Um, and what kind of information do you want to add as quick reference for your users? So this guidance for, for success is really exciting. Oh, man, I missed a step here on my, sorry, on my locker service. Um, let's see. All right. Well, the nice thing is that what, what happens here, we're going to have to work around it because I am not going to go change this in the org right now. But um, this panel here actually brings up a rich text field 
where you can put information for your users. So for example, if I want to tell our users at needs analysis, well, hey, what does this mean? What does this stage mean? What are our expectations? That means that we need you to schedule a discovery call with the stakeholder and the decision maker, and you need to gather whatever needs analysis, right? And so it will actually, um, at the time that we go to set this up, really sorry that I don't, have my uh, rich text field there, but at the time that we go to set this up, when the user does needs analysis then, they're going to see your rich text message right here underneath the path. So it's a way of giving them prompts and reminders. And the other nice thing is that this path here and the reminders, the rich text that you add underneath, displays beautifully on Salesforce One. So even on the phone on Salesforce One, it really shows very nicely on the tablets. Um, it looks really, really slick, okay? Um, a lot of changes to how things are laid out. So they have tried, if you notice, I'm looking at this opportunity, they have tried to make this a lot leaner. And again, you have a lot more customization um, on the layout. We've now got a tab where all of the activity can exist. So all of your quick actions for log a call or for create a new task or for um, create a new event all pop up right here on this activity tab. So it keeps everything all together and clean and nice. Um, you can send an email directly to one of the contacts or multiple contacts right off of this, um, right off of this opportunity. You've got all of your standard email functionality here that you can um, set up. We've got chatter in a standalone tab so that we can see all of our chatter feed content um, and have everything in one place. You'll notice that there are related lists over here on the side instead of across the top. Um, so the related lists are just a uh, lightning component right over here on the side so that folks can see quick visuals. And then, of course, the details, which is a standard Salesforce detail page layout. Um, but, you know, it's just the details, right? It keeps everything else kind of clean and off to the side. Um, you've got a lot of quick actions up here as well. So some of the um, standard lightning quick actions, following the record if it's um, chatter enabled, editing the record, creating a new case. So maybe you're working on a sales opportunity and the customer says, you know, hey, by the way, uh, we're real interested in buying, but we can't move forward until we have this other issue resolved for our um, customer service, we've never had time to log the case, what have you, right? And so you can actually go in, create the case right here from the opportunity, um, add new notes, um, and, and do any of your standard functions. The biggest challenge for me as a uh, long-running Salesforce ad admin was getting used to when I change the Salesforce classic page layout and when I change the lightning layout. And, and they do kind of both impact. So here, if I wanted to make changes, like if folks said, you know what, we don't really need to see expected revenue on this detail layout, can you just take that off? My instinct was to go to the gear and go to edit page because to me, I was editing the page layout. That is not correct. That is how you edit 
the lightning page as a whole, um, what I need to do is actually go to edit object because I'm changing one of the components. I'm changing the actual page layout that is a part of the lightning layout. So I'm going to go ahead and come here to the um, object manager. You know, I just did did edit object, which took me into the object manager for the object I was on. I've got all of my um, quick links up here at the top, so I'm going to go to page layout and I'm going to click opportunity layout here. And so I'm going to come in and say, you know, truthfully expected revenue, we don't really care. I'm going to take that off and I'm going to save it, okay? Because I have all these um, different layouts in here, I'm not entirely sure. I don't recall which one is assigned to my user, but I'm going to make it easy for the interest of time and I'm going to come in here and say for for all of these, we're just going to use the opportunity layout. Personally, I don't like all the other layouts that come out of the box, but that's me. So, um, so now when I go back, I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page um, for lightning. Again, I do notice on some occasions I have to refresh the page more than once. Um, in order for the change to come through, let's take a look here. Yep, yep, it still didn't come off. So let me come back here and let me hit my opportunity again. There we go. All right, so my expected amount has come off of the page layout. Okay, so that's why I would go to the edit object. If I go to edit page, then what I'm going to be able to do is the rearranging of the actual lightning components that are on the lightning page, which includes page layouts and chatter feeds and things like that. So you'll notice as I'm going around on these different sections, I've got, for example, the Highlights panel. We're all familiar with the Highlights panel from Classic. The Highlights panel has become a little bit more robust now. And so we do want to make sure to familiarize ourselves with the See How It Works. It actually comes from two components. So a Highlights panel comes, the fields on the highlight panel come from a compact layout for this object, but any of the actions come from our classic page layout. I know it's a little bit confusing. I'm hoping that over time this is still a new feature, so I'm hoping that over time this will become more streamlined, but this is how it works right now, right? And so, and you can tell out of all of your page layouts which one you're previewing and so on. You you can see things um, like your path component. So path is just a standard lightning component that you can drag and drop. You see over here how I have the related list. So anything related to the opportunity is over here and I, I have my option of doing my display as um, uh, the default, which I believe is list, or you can do tile. So, t so say for example you have um, five products, you would actually see five tiles instead of five rows like you would see in a list. Um, so very nice clean um, options there. Um, and then I've got my combo um, tabs here and so this section um, the component is called tabs 
that's the standard lightning component tab. The tabs that are available do vary from um, object to object, okay? And so the tabs that are available are um, like, for example, on an opportunity, you can have a tab for activity, you can have a tab for chatter, and you can have a tab for details, okay? If you click add a tab, you'll notice that it just repeated details again. This is a very common mistake that I and others have made because it has this nice little drop down here that says label. And so you can say, oh, well, gosh, I want the related stuff up there as a fourth. And you click related and you assume that what you've done is you've actually included the related as one of these tabs. You are incorrect. <laughs> that is not how it works. Um, you still have to go and you have to actually take your components and you have to put your components in there so that you have something to go along with that tab. Um, and the other thing that can be really tricky is, say for example, if you wanted chatter to come before activity, right? Again, common mistake, click here, say, oh, okay, I want this one to be activity and I want this one to be chatter does not work that way. If you do that and say this is activity and this is, oh, come on, chatter, my mouth is not playing well with others right now, um, then you actually end up with mislabeled tabs. So that is a problem. So you don't want to do that. What you want to do, actually, is leave the, the label as it was, and you can drag these around. So you can say, okay, I want chatter to be first, then activity, then details, then related, right? And you can see a preview here. Ah, comfort, this is chatter. This is activity, this is details, this is the related, right? And you can define what you want to be the first tab. And so then you go ahead and you save, you activate. Okay, if it hasn't already been activated. Um, and then when you go back to your opportunity, Come on, little friend. My internet just is not as fast as I would like it to be today. Um, but then you can see now I've got all of my tabs that, that I was looking for, and I've got my layout arranged the way that I want it to be arranged. Okay. Um, and another exciting thing is that we didn't have until the most recent release here is the um, ability to do a Kanban on our cases as well. So I'm super excited about that. I love seeing more and more Lightning that is, um, you know, Lightning was very sales and marketing centric to begin with. And so it has come quite a long way to give us a lot more um, of these cool tools for for uh, other departments and other objects as well. So I'm really excited. Um, I could probably go on for another four or five hours because I'm so excited, but I know that we are coming up on 10 minutes of the hour. So um, Andrea, I wanted to check and see if we have some questions in the question widget. Yes, we have a few questions coming in, and just a reminder, if you do have questions, please type them into your GoToMeeting panel. Um, okay, so the first question, um, for companies that are, are considering moving to Lightning, um, how much time and effort should they plan for um, when, when looking at making that upgrade? 
Uh, it's a really good question. It's a question that we, we see on the success community and here in user groups a lot. The honest answer is it really depends on your org and your users, right? So if you are one of those orgs that has thousands of custom objects, for example, might not be such a great idea because, uh, or may not be such a great idea to try and do it quickly because you do have some things that you want to get in there and kind of refine. You know, the Salesforce wizards for um, migrating to Lightning will migrate all of your stuff to the Lightning experience, but you still want to go in and tweak your underlying pages and your actions and the lightning pages that get created. And if you've got a bunch of objects, that could take some time to, excuse me, to go through and do. Um, always, 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 I highly recommend make the change in a sandbox first. For something like lightning, I think if you can leverage at least a partial copy sandbox instead of just a even if you don't have a full copy sandbox. I think it's very useful because it's easier for your stakeholders to get that familiarity with the look and feel if they're looking at some data. They're not just looking at empty screens and going, I don't get it, right? So if you can leverage that partial copy sandbox, I think that's a great idea. Um, and, you know, I would schedule I would schedule, you know, say an average size org, I would still schedule three or four weeks just to get the sandbox created, get it converted over, have people get in and poke around at the data, decide if you need some improvements. Some of us, our page layouts have gotten very stale, right? And now that we can do all these new, new cool things on the page layouts and in the list views, your users may have a lot of requests for changes. Um, the other thing is keep in mind that this is a great opportunity for those of you that have wanted to get your users on Salesforce One and just haven't had the, the, um, the use case for it. Any of you who have users who are mobile, start getting them onto Salesforce One as you're migrating them to Lightning because the user interfaces are so much more similar, it makes the transition a lot easier. We've had a couple of customers recently here who were really struggling with adoption on Salesforce Classic because their people were all in the field. And so Salesforce Classic, Salesforce One just didn't look the same. We got them squared on um, Salesforce One and Lightning, and it all looks and feels the same and smells the same and tastes the same. So that was a long answer. <laughs> what else do we have, Miss Andrea? Um, another question related to that. So when you see, um, users mo moving over to Lightning, how much how much training does it typically require to get them to understand the new interface? And um, with the customers that you've seen embrace Lightning, how, how have their users responded? It, it, it's interesting because, you know, you would think, right, that it would take a long time because, oh, it's a new user interface and stuff. I actually had a group recently here, and um, the guys you know, that I was training it, it was, it was a group of about 15 and they all voluntarily shared that, you know, they were in um, a generation above me. So they were between 50 and 70 years old and they said, you know, not entirely familiar with things like Facebook and Twitter and, you know, they basically use their iPhone or their Droid for a phone. They don't use it as a smartphone. We did four hours of training and part of that time was also spent discussing new business process and new, so, you know, the actual technology itself, um, it was maybe one to two hours because people do pick it up very quickly.
quickly because you know it's big it's um, it's got a lot of white space to it it makes it very obvious and very easy for them to quickly click and move around and get to what they need okay awesome um, we have a question about the calendar in Lightning. Um, does that sync out of the box with Outlook and Gmail and some of the other more common mail clients? No. Mm -mm, no. Sales, I mean, it's, uh, it's like anything else, you know, you can set up um, the Outlook for, uh, there's a new app called Outlook for Lightning that you can um, uh, it set up the plugin for, but no, it doesn't automatically out of the box. Thing. Um, another question coming in um, about um, why more companies don't make the upgrade. So it seems like a lot of organizations are kind of taking a wait and see approach um, and haven't made the switch yet. Um, what are some of the, the most common reasons you see for that? So there are a couple of things. One thing that, you know, I have heard through the community, I've heard in our local user groups, and I've heard from other, you know, others like me is, um, you know, initially people were hesitant. It's, it's new, right? And so they're not entirely sure if the functionality will fit them. Um, you know, the spring release, I believe, was the fourth release on Lightning. And so when it first came out, it was small parts that came out. You couldn't do things like convert leads or um, there were some other functionality gaps. It's also come a long way in the, um, in the, uh, broadness of, of what you can do. As you can see now, we can do a lot more with cases in Lightning than one, what we could do previously. So Lightning, when it first came out, was much more sales and, and, and marketing centric. Um, and now after several releases, it is um, much more amenable for um, uh, other organizations like service organizations. So I think people are finally, you know, at a point where they're, they're comfortable that all of their users could be on Lightning and have a common experience. Okay, great. Well, we are coming up on the top of the hour, so um, we'll have to wrap things up. Um, again, we will be sending out a link to the recording, um, so watch your email for that. Um, Jen, thank you for, for taking the time to present this today. This was really helpful, um, and thank you all for joining. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody. I'm, I'm really excited um, and, and so glad that you all are joining. Oh, and real quick before we um, – before we, sorry, one other quick thing that I forgot is I just noticed here when I was on my lead um, layout here, uh, we can actually do import actions. So for those objects that are enabled for the native data loader, you can actually click and do an import right from the list view, which is really exciting too. So that was my other big fun thing that we can do. So. Yeah, that's All awesome. Right. That's a, a great feature. I'm glad you slipped that one in there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. Hope you have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.